Hi everyone, my name is Paige. I'm a lifestyle photographer based in Paris, France, usually. I've been quarantining in America and I've been working on setting up a print shop online for my photos. So I wanted to talk to you today about the process of choosing a professional lab and choosing paper to print your photos on in case you're interested in getting your photos professionally printed. So I ordered sample prints from four different professional labs all based in the US and then picked a favorite one, which you'll see as we go, and ordered slightly tweaked versions of those same test prints in four different types of paper so we could compare what they look like on different papers as well. I am still making some final decisions for my own print shop. I would love your opinions, especially on the paper types. So when you get to that part, please comment below. Let me know what you think. So because I'm still finalizing things, my print shop is not live yet. I will let you know what it is and I do plan on donating the first month's worth of proceeds to Black Lives Matter related organizations. Again, I will keep you updated on the details. I will let you know when that's live. And in the meantime, let's get into the decision making process and I hope it helps you too. So as you may know if you watch previous videos or if we talk, I don't know, I've been working slowly on setting up a print shop for a while now through quarantine and it's kind of been slow going and I have decided to try to speed it up. I want to be able to sell prints and donate those proceeds which means that I need to have prints to sell. So this has been a pretty new process for me but I thought it might be interesting for those of you who have considered selling prints in the past to kind of see what goes into it because I had to figure this out myself. I'm still figuring it out. Um, I'm at the beginning of this process. In case it's helpful to anyone else, I wanted to take you with me. Selling prints is not entirely new to me. As a photographer, I do have a print service that I offer my clients. However, it's less of a fine art print thing and more of a print on demand thing. Most of my clients are based in the US and Canada and occasionally other countries, but usually English speaking countries that are not the country that I live in. So how I usually deliver photos to clients is I will set up a digital gallery and then I will hook that gallery up to a photo lab that I trust. I know that they do really good work. And then I let people order directly from the gallery and I don't process those prints myself. They go straight to the lab. I color correct everything, obviously when editing. And then the lab makes final tweaks to print and it just kind of goes smoothly straight to the customer. I've had really good results with that with a couple of labs that I've worked with. One of those labs I'm getting test prints from for the fine art prints, so that'll be an interesting thing. Selling prints as a standalone is a little bit different. So when it comes to selling art prints as opposed to providing prints for clients, I could set it up in a similar way and kind of put those photos in their own gallery and let people order directly and have those photos shipped to them, which is a route that I have considered. It's still sort of on the table, but there are a few reasons that I've decided not to go that route for now kind of just doesn't feel like as fine art of an experience. It feels like going through a gallery and picking photos. One really big thing that has been bothering me as I was exploring that route is that because the gallery service is designed for people ordering photos of themselves to, you know, frame and put on the wall or put on Christmas cards or whatever, the service lets people zoom in or crop the photo that they're ordering to make it just how they like it, which is amazing when it's a client wanting photos of themselves. It is less amazing when I'm trying to offer a print that I've really thought out and that I have specific dimensions for and I've already gone through and made the crops that I think make it look the best and things like that. And I can't remove that option with the gallery service that I work with now, so that's kind of a big thing. The other thing is that it just feels like scrolling through an online gallery, which again, really great when they're all photos of you. It's a beautiful way to present them, I think, but it doesn't feel like a store. It doesn't feel like a shop. So it's still a little bit on the table. The production costs are lower for that, so that's kind of a big reason to consider it. Customer experience, I think, is also not as good. So the way that I'm thinking about setting up a print shop separate from that is setting up a page on my website where you can go and you can you know, click buy on a print, you would see what it would look like in advance. And then when you check out, I would get that notification. I would get in touch with the professional lab that I think will do the best job, um, order the print from them and then get that print to the customer, which is, you know, a little more work for me on the back end, a little bit more expensive to set up, etc. But I think ultimately it can provide a better experience for this kind of artwork. So part of the reason that this has been such a slow process for me is that I initially tried to go the route of doing it through the gallery. Ran into some roadblocks, talked to the company that I do the galleries through, kind of realized that there wasn't a way to get it to do what I wanted. And so I've been looking into how to set up a shop on my website and 
you know, get that going from the front end and then on the back end, trying to find a photo lab who has great quality photos and makes that process of me receiving an order and then having to communicate with the lab as smooth as possible. The costs for working directly with a photo lab in that way are generally higher than when people order them through the gallery. So trying to find the best, you know, balance between, obviously I want to offer the highest quality of photography that I can on my website and I also don't want to charge more for it than I have to. So I made a bunch of pros and cons lists. I looked into pricing for a bunch of different labs that I had worked with or that I had heard good things about. And I ended up with a list of four labs who all have great reputations. One of them I've worked with before. It's the one that I currently work with when I do client galleries. And the other three I'm familiar with but haven't worked directly with yet. And I made an account at all four of them and I ordered test prints from all four. So I just placed those orders last night. When they come in, I'm going to go ahead and compare them and see what I think in terms of the options that they have available, the quality of prints that I'm getting, the similarity between those prints and how they look on my screen because that's always a bit of a tricky thing. Hopefully that combined with the price that they charge for the papers that I want and the minimum order amount that they have, etc. Hopefully I'll be able to make the best decision for a print shop and get that up and running ideally very soon. I have my notebook. I'll tell you which four labs that I ordered from and what I ordered because the test prints that you can get from each lab vary. I ordered test prints from Miller's Lab, which is the lab that I currently use that's hooked up to my client galleries, if those galleries are in America, White House Custom Color, WHCC, Pro DPI, and Richard's Lab. So Miller's, WHCC, and Pro DPI all have a free test print option once you make an account with them, which is amazing. So the thing about the free test prints, it's amazing but every company does them a little bit differently. So the prints that we are going to end up with as they come in are not gonna be necessarily directly comparable for all four, but we're gonna do our best. I got eight by 10 prints of the same five photos, but I didn't get all five photos from every place. To the best of my knowledge, they're all printed on Kodak Luster paper, but again, we'll see when they come in. Some of the labs did not specify, or some of them just said Luster. I got four 8x10s from Miller's, um, and Miller's actually does this really cool thing where if you order four test prints from them, they'll give you two copies of each one, one where it's directly as submitted, and one where they do their own calibration before printing. I could go on a whole discussion about color calibration. This is probably not the video for that, but if you're interested, let me know because it's a whole thing on its own. WHCC doesn't do the calibration thing, but they let you do five 8x10s, so I order five. Pro DPI, I ordered three 8x10s, which is the amount that they offer. In this case, Pro DPI also has a color calibration thing, but rather than adjusting them for you and letting you compare, they actually give you what's called an ICC profile in advance. So an ICC profile is something that you can plug into Photoshop or Lightroom and it will tell tell Photoshop or Lightroom how your photo is going to change when it's printed. So you can preview on your screen the paper and the way that the ink will interact with the paper, which is very cool. And then you can make adjustments that way. And the final image that you submit looks different from the other image that you started with, but should look more similar in the end to what you want to have printed, if that makes sense. For Pro DPI, they let me do three 8x10s, but I actually only submitted two photos that were different. The third photo was the same as one of the first ones, but I had adjusted it based on the ICC profile that they gave me to check their color calibration that way. And then Richards, unfortunately, does not offer a free test print option. They do offer 10% off your first order, so that was something. They have a minimum order of at least $13, so I spent all $13. So I got four 8x10s again, and then I got a set of four by fives, all of the same photo, but in different papers to see, because it seemed like they weren't gonna send me paper samples, and then I would like to know what their papers are like, so I did that. And then I also ordered a thank you card to have printed on, I think it was a three and a half by five, just because I'm trying to figure out, you know, if I'm in France and I want to sell prints from an American printer to American clients, how do I do that best? Before having seen the prints, I am leaning towards either Miller's because I like them already, I use them already, I think their customer service is amazing. I have loved that they do color calibration for the client gallery 
boundaries that I submit because that means that I can trust that no matter what, they'll always make sure things are perfect on their end before printing. I've always used their color calibration, so I'm really interested to see how different their calibrated version is from my, you know, calibrated to my screen but not their printer's version is. The downside of Miller's is that they're one of the more expensive options if I'm ordering one print at a time because their minimum order for bulk orders is higher. They're all around, I think the lowest was 12 and Miller's is the highest at 15. So they're not insane, but it means that like selling a five by seven print if I'm going one at a time just doesn't really make financial sense because I would still have to pay $15 plus shipping in some cases and then charge more for that. It gets complicated. So not ideal from that front, but from what I know about their quality and their customer service, they're still a strong contender. The other lab that I'm thinking I might end up going with, although again, have not seen the prints yet, so we will see, is Pro DPI. That's for a couple of reasons. First of all, the experience ordering from them was, I think, the easiest one. They make it very user-friendly. Their website is beautiful. That shouldn't matter, but it does. I like things that are pretty. That's part of it. It's just like an easier experience. And the other reason is that they are more affordable, which means that I might be able to offer prints at a slightly lower price point to my customers, which would be great. The hesitation there is that obviously the quality has to still be great. So if they end up being a little bit cheaper and also a little bit worse, that's probably not worth it. I know like for me, at least as somebody who buys art, I would rather pay an extra five or 10 or even more dollars for something that really feels like I want it hanging in my home and I want it to last a lifetime. And then one kind of final factor is that Pro DPI and White House Custom Color, I believe both ship internationally and international shipping gets expensive, but at least it's an option. Miller's only ships to the US and Richard's ships to the US and Canada. This is kind of a more unique thing for me. Like I, I am a photographer that works in mostly France with mostly American customers. Sometimes I work in the US or in this case, I'm quarantined in the US and not working. So I kind of go between two countries. My work goes between two countries. I'm usually in a different place from my clients. And of course, not all of my clients are American. I do have European clients too. I'm not totally sure how I wanna do this going forward, whether it would make more sense to have a lab in the US and find another lab in Europe somewhere in France. If you're here, I would love to know what you think. If you were buying a print, would you rather get something more quickly and have it be unsigned or would you rather wait longer, potentially pay more in shipping, but end up with a signed print. I know that I really love having prints that are signed, so that's something I'm trying to figure out if it's feasible, but maybe that's not important to everybody, or maybe it's not worth the extra time and money that it would require. So let me know in the comments what you think. Would love your opinion, and yeah, we will talk more when I get the papers. I'll see you then. Okay, we're filming this outside so that I can see what these look like in better light. It took a while to get them. I ordered them all last Friday evening and they all came on different days. And I finally just got the last one. So this one is from Richards. I just got this one today. It was delivered on Friday last week, but I don't have access to the mailbox here. So it took a while to get to me, whereas the other three were left at my door as I requested. The Miller's package got here on Tuesday afternoon. White House Custom Color got here on Wednesday afternoon. Pro DPI got here on Thursday. Different levels of packaging. I generally prefer less packaging when it is up to me, but I will say that both of these, so this is White House Custom, no, this is White House Custom Color. This is Richards. They're both in flat mailer envelopes and they're both, we'll see how the prints are, but they're a little bit, you know, worn, worn from the post. I'm actually going to get this out and keep score here. We're going to just give them each one, two, three, four, a ranking for each thing. Shift time is easy because they all came on different days. So one, two, three, and four. I will say the ship time to customers, if I end up going directly to customers, is different. I think Miller's in particular is significantly slower. Then we have packaging. When it's shipped directly to clients, you can choose to have them shipped in a box, which I think I would probably end up doing because I have to hit the minimum order anyway if I'm doing that. So you might as well put a pretty box in it, but I'll rank them based on what I got them in. So I'm gonna give Miller's, again, top points for this. It's compact, it's safe, it's not a waste of cardboard. And then this one for DPI, second place, more cardboard than is necessary. There's not a lot in here, I don't think, but it's safe. These two, I'll tie for third place. They're basically the same idea. One is FedEx, one is USPS. You know, I did say Miller's had safe packaging and this is extreme, but okay, so you open Miller's, it's attached to this cardboard thing. There's cardboard on the back. The whole thing is taped together to protect the prints and there's like a foam thing in here too. So this is really safe feeling. We're in. So there's a foam on the top 
and the bottom of this and the cardboard and the packing slip. Very secure, lots of stuff. And then we get to this welcome packet, which is very pretty. They sent us kind of a little selection. So these are my prints, which I'll get to in a moment when I can compare them all. First impression, really beautiful. They also sent us paper samples, which is great because I do know in general what kinds of paper I prefer, but I'm not familiar with every paper that they have. And I'm certainly not familiar with every paper from every company. So I will be looking at those to make a decision. This is like a nice little, Miller's is the one that sent me both color corrected prints that they color corrected and my own prints without correction. So I can compare those, that'll be interesting to see. So it's telling me how to do that. It is telling me how to color calibrate my monitor, which I already do regularly. So I am feeling good about that. Okay, and then they also sent me a little welcome to Miller's packet. Hello friend, nice of them. I don't need it. it kind of feels like a waste of paper, but beautiful touch. Okay, that's Miller's. White House Custom Color arrived second in this FedEx package. I ordered them on Friday evening, so they really all received the order Monday morning. So Miller's took slightly over 24 hours to get to me. This took two days to get to me. Much easier to open. So they've done a similar kind of like folder situation to Miller's to kind of keep it safe. But whereas Miller's had that cardboard situation to kind of keep everything sturdy, the only thing doing that is the folder itself. And it is a little bit curved, I don't know if you can see. I think that's fine because it's bigger than the prints are, but something to keep in mind. This is a whole big welcome packet too. This is way more than I got from Miller's. So first of all, we have the print. It's a lot more cross-processed than I thought I was editing it on my computer. And then they also sent us this here partner in success booklet which is a catalog it looks like some paper samples the same photo and all the papers which is nice because you can kind of compare how the same photo looks okay and then we have press printed sample kit so these are for photo printing and these are for press printing so things like business cards holiday cards other cards books it looks like as well press inspiration kit albums and books which is weird it's just like paper samples from the pages of the albums or yeah it is okay man i'm already exhausted by all this stuff that they sent me a lot of empty space in this box but Random. That's sweet of them, I guess. I don't, is this intentional? Did they mean to send me a single sour punch in the box? Just one sour punch. Uh, thanks, Pro DPI. <laughs> Similar thing to Miller's. They have packaged it with cardboard to keep it steady. A little foamy paper here too, and a packing slip on top. Pro DPI gives you three free prints, and before you print with them, they give you the print specifications. So in Lightroom, I actually went in and did a proof copy based on their luster paper to see if that made a big difference. So I only have two different photos from them. Unlike the other ones, they put sort of a watermark across saying sample, 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 which I don't love, but that's fine. No print paper samples or anything, which is fine, although I do really like that. I don't think I want all of the stuff that White House Custom Color sent, although that was very nice of them, and I appreciate it, and the only reason I don't want all of it is just because it's not all what I'm interested in right now. So for Miller's is winning with like, this is all I really wanted, those paper samples with example prints and my sample prints, and a nice note, the sample prints were great. I would love to know what their other papers look like. The last one is Richard's, coming four days later after they got the order. So here here again, see it's like a little, hopefully the prints are fine because that's why they put this here, but it's a little bent. You can see it got a little, maybe a little messed up in transit, but they did package it, I think a little more safely than WHCC, which I appreciate. And again, that might not matter because I think I would be just directly shipping prints to people and I can choose different packaging for that. I will say Richard's is the only one where I had to pay for my own test prints. They gave me a 10% discount, but the other three have like a free test print thing when you first sign up and Richard's does not. Not a big deal, but you know, I always like free. Cool. So I did order from Richards because I had to hit the minimum limit anyway. I ordered some different things. So I ordered a thank you card addressed to myself that I just quickly designed in Canva and I signed it on my computer and I was thinking that might be a nice touch when I ship prints to people. So I wanted to test that out. And then I ordered a sample of all their papers all with the same print in a smaller size. I think it was a four by six or maybe three and a half. And then test prints, eight by 10 luster paper like everything else. I'm gonna put these to the side right now because these are for me to compare papers and that is cool, but not my main focus right now. What I mainly wanna do is look at the print quality of the different prints I got. We're just gonna compare the eight by 10s. I have slightly different prints from the three. These are pro DPI. So from here I ordered this print, which was from my new medium format camera, which I will be throwing a video about that out soon. So keep an eye out. This, which is a digital photo, looks a lot less cross process than it did on the other one so that's already something from Paris and then this is the same one so they print on the back here you can't change what it prints on the back so I need to be a little bit more attentive to what I write for my file names when I do this for real it has a random number which is I think maybe the order number and then it has an abbreviated version of my file name which thankfully I labeled one of them Naritsu Luster which was this one so we can compare that better and then the number of pictures in the order and then copyright page group 2020 so this is the one that I proofed with their color profile that they gave me and this is the one that I did not but this is the one I'm going to compare to the other ones because this is just kind of 
as is. This is the same photo I submitted everywhere else. This one I only submitted to them. Very similar. I do like the one that I proofed for them better. It's a little bit higher contrast, maybe a little bit sharper, a little bit brighter. It's so subtle. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but I'll just hold this in front of my face and you can tell me what you think. This is the one that I corrected and this is the one I'm gonna compare to all the other ones. These are Richards. I think I did the most from Richards. Okay, we have this same one and this same one. Just texturally, these are like a little sticky, which is weird. So looking at Richards versus the Pro DPI one that I'm actually comparing these prints. Oh, again, very similar. Hi. <laughs> Good. Are you a video? Yeah. Hi, <laughs> video. Thanks. <laughs> the Richards one looks a lot more like the one I corrected for myself for Pro DPI, which is interesting because that could save me a step potentially. Let's compare these two also. Richards. Pro DPI. It just seems like the white balance changed. I think Richards is doing their own color correction. So the Pro DPI one has kind of a pink tone to it, which is intentional. I mean, I, I did make sure there was a little bit more of a pink tint, but it's significantly more than the Richards one, which has canceled that out, added a little bit more green, and it does have a bit of a cross-processed look to it, which you can really see in the sky. This sky is a little bit like yellowy, little green, and this one's sort of a white leaning towards purple. I could go either way. I think I prefer Richards here again. That's all I have to compare Pro DPI to, but I'm gonna look at the other two. So these are the other two I got from Richards. I know I got this one from Miller's as well. I don't remember if I got this one from anywhere else. Again, this is medium format. This is digital. I think this is me. I don't love the color grading on this photo. I think it's a little too pink. Do I love it? I don't know. I'll think about it. It's less remarkable. I'm happier with this one is what I'm saying. This I think is beautiful. We like Richards better than Pro DPI off the bat, but the fact that Pro DPI is letting me make my own adjustments. Let's compare the adjustments one actually before I move on because I think that could be interesting. Definitely liked the Richards one better than the unadjusted. You know, I like the Richards one better than the one I adjusted too. It's just, this wasn't that contrasty of a photo to begin with. So I think they're adding their own contrast maybe. I said the Richards paper was stickier, that's true. The other thing is that this one is a lot thinner and the Pro DPI one is like a, it's a heavier weight paper. So Miller's, we have two things to compare. We have obviously the prints themselves versus the prints of all the other ones, but we also have their color corrections versus my own. They've very nicely told me which is which. So this says no color density corrections, printed as is. And then here it says, if you're doing your own color editing, adjust your colors monitor settings until it matches this print. Keep this print for future monitor adjustments, which is helpful. So I calibrate my screen, but I calibrate it to a D65 white point instead of a D50 white point, which is what Miller's recommends. So I have the one that I did, and then I have the one that they made corrections to. So here, again, interestingly, my base print just has a little bit more of like a greeny blue tone in the whites specifically. Actually, I actually think it's the whole white balance now that I'm looking at it. So they took my sort of bluey green white balance here, which I actually, just looking at this, I really like this. I'm not unhappy with it at all. But I do like their corrections here. Uncorrected, corrected. So they basically just took my white balance and they canceled out those blue greens. They made it a little bit warmer. In the first place I saw it was up here in these flowers. So I would take a look at that. But then in the rest of it too, the whites of the window and the stairs, it's just a little bit warmer and the one that they did. Not a huge difference, but I do, I do like the adjustments that they made. So that's good to know. Miller's does the adjustments for free. Richards offers adjustments as well, but they are like an extra 75 cents a photo or something. Oh, I did order this one from them too. So that's cool. We can compare it to Richards. This is no corrections. This is with corrections. Directions. These look very similar. These look like Miller's saw it and they were like, she did a good job. Let's leave it. I think I very slightly prefer my version to their version. Then we have Asia wearing Hisis Designs. They're an amazing company. I met both of the owners. They're sisters. They're awesome. I'll link this model below to Asia. She's amazing. Again, I'm like, what did they really do? I maybe slightly prefer their version, but I would not be able to tell the difference if I just had one of them. And last but not least, our original photo before, after. I think my before is better than their after on this one. This is the level of difference I'm talking about. Like this is a minor difference. Skin tones, again, skin tones are the most important to me when there's a person in the photo. We generally like people to look like themselves when possible. Let's look at those compared to Richards so we can can rank them. Here's Richards. I preferred mine for Miller's. I feel like the only one that was a significant difference was the very first one with the building and those trees and every other one I'm like <sighs> I'm gonna do the one is just straight out of the box compared to theirs. Richards in this one is a little bit they took a little bit of the green tone that I had going on here out and they added some contrast and some saturation notably which you can kind of see again in that brick area. I like both of these again the Richards one is a lighter weight paper but not by a lot. These are much more similar. I think between Richards and Miller's. I prefer Miller's. Richard's kind of made my whole photo a little more towards magenta and a little heavier on the reds, which is not a bad thing, but I, you know, on purpose edited it to be a little more on the greens and I like that better. So 
Miller's Wind Black comparison. Here again, Richard's is just pinker. It's a lot heavier on those pinks and purples. While I liked that on its own, now that I'm looking at the way Miller's is printing it, without their corrections or with their corrections, they're both very, very similar. This one, much more pink, which I don't hate. I like it better, less pink. I'm gonna give this one to Miller's also. Let's look at our Eiffel Tower photos. I think when I looked at this and I was like, I don't like what I did to this photo. Now I'm looking at it compared to this and I do like the photo here. I think it'll be interesting to compare them to how they look on my screen. When I picked this one up in the stack of Richards, I was like, I don't even really like this photo. I don't like the way I edited it. But on the Miller's one, I, I do like it. So I think... Hello, my phone died while I was filming the last section, so you did not get the full thing. Sorry about that. So I have the prints back and I actually ordered a second batch of test prints from someone I will tell you about in a second. I believe where we left off was me comparing Miller's to Richard's and I had said that generally the Miller's tones seemed to be, I thought, a little truer to my intentions. They were a little bit more on the greener neutral side, whereas Richard's was a little bit more on the pinker purplier side. Where it cut off was right before I showed you the White House custom color WHCC prints. So I will show this to you now and I will compare them still to the Millers because I think the Millers is still the best example of the prints that I got. So unfortunately you're not getting my first reactions here because I already filmed this. White House custom color and Millers. So as you can see kind of from that or maybe you can't see, again the White House custom color is a little bit pinker than the Millers. I did look at these compared to my computer after filming this the first time. The White House custom color is actually closer here to what I see on my screen. My edits were a little bit pinker than I remember so I actually toned that down which is partly why I ordered a second set of test prints. I still like the Miller's interpretation of my color grading better, even though this is more accurate to my actual screen. I think just on paper, I like the way that it shows up better the way Miller's did it. It's just sharper in the Miller's one. Maybe you can see if I get really close. Look at the detail in the sleeve. You can really see the embroidery on this Miller's one. And on the White House custom color, it's really beautiful. I think the colors are really beautiful. I think, you know, if you were looking at it from far away, it's great, but it's just not, not the same level of crisp. And that is unfortunately kind of my impression for all four of these. The first time I was looking at it, the one that I noticed it on was actually one that I didn't print in, I think, any other test print. And it's this print of the California coast where I'm from. I don't know how well you can see that. Nothing is totally crisp. It's all sort of this soft focus. And it's really unfortunate because I think their color grading is beautiful. I think they're really beautiful. You know, I think their actual print quality, like the image itself is really nice. The paper is actually the exact same paper as Miller's uses. My final ranking. I would say Miller's Pro DPI. I initially thought I just really didn't like the color interpretation of especially this first print that I think I looked at. And then when I was comparing to my computer, I realized that I actually started off my initial print and then I ordered this correction. And then for every other printer, I accidentally ordered a different color correction that I did not order for this one. For the next three printers, when I placed my orders, I actually ordered a version of this print that I had color corrected for Pro DPI's matte paper. None of these have matte paper. And I actually liked all three of those better than my initial version. That alone was reason enough to test a print that I could actually compare more accurately to the other three. But in addition to that, I was looking at the pricing, specifically the pricing of ordering prints and having them packaged for me and directly shipped to clients because I am about to head back to France and that is probably what's going to make the most sense. Miller's has a price tag to match their amazing quality. With that said, this is second order of prints from ProDPI. Not a mistake, it turns out they just this is adorable. I, I don't understand. You will see that I ordered a thank you card to go with this. I'm testing that out since I will probably be shipping these directly to people and not being able to get the prints and see them and sign them before I do that. There's like a slight red tone in the black of the text color, but the white and the pinks are fine. So I think that's probably my fault. I went from PDF to JPEG and that causes some weirdness. It's <laughs> printed on photo paper, which is also kind of weird and funny. I ordered a large print of that one that I had before to compare and then a bunch of small prints so that I can compare different papers and make hopefully a final decision. So let's first look at the big one. And this is very different to the previous one that I got from them. This was the initial one that I was comparing. This is the one that I adjusted. This is an adjusted original based on the proofing that I had done for this printer. This is the one that actually should match all the other ones. So as you can see, pretty significantly different in terms of contrast. For example, look at the kind of brighter 
almost tealy whites here versus sort of more muted tones here. This is a lot more red than this. Looking at both, I'm like, which would I rather actually have in my shop? I think I still like the higher contrast one. I think there's a reason I picked this version. So let's look at the Miller's one. This was my winner off the bat. New version from Pro DPI. So the Miller's one is still on the greener side. This is still on the pinker side. We know this. This is not a surprise. I like the Miller's colors better. I will probably reorder this again with less pink in it to see if I can get closer to this. So that's kind of annoying, <laughs> to be honest. I think way more comparable to this one than the previous version, just so you can kind of see the difference. Before, when I was making the comparison, this seemed like a huge difference. So I'm very glad that this is not the same print, that this was a mistake on my part. This is a lot closer. The only thing, again, is just that this has a little bit more, and again, I'm looking at skin tones a lot, which is why I keep going to this photo. She looks kind of just a little bit red pink, and here, this is a more normal skin tone on this side. Totally minor difference. If I were looking at either of these on their own, I would be happy. The only reason I'm being this nitpicky is because I'm comparing them, and they're right next to each other and I can. This is a heavier paper, it just feels nicer. That doesn't really matter once you have it framed, but since I have them in my hands, I might as well tell you. So yeah, I will probably try to make this a little bit greener, but I'm much happier with it now. Now we have this little set. I ordered these on that same original paper, but in this size so I can compare them more easily. Metallic paper, pearl paper, and deep matte paper. This is clearly metallic, it sort of reflects, there's like a sheen. That's the metallic paper. <laughs> and it doesn't say on the back, so that's just my best guess. I did adjust this one a little bit before getting it reprinted because I knew it was too pink in the initial version. I think this is the pearl, and then these are the matte. I obviously, like everybody, I have biases in the papers that I like. This is personal preference entirely. I do want to show you how it renders the actual photo differently. So again, when you order from Pro DPI, they do give you color profile, so you can go in and do soft proofing in Lightroom, but I just kind of wanted to see how the same print would look different. Let me first double check about the pearl and the metallic so we don't get them mixed up going forward. Thank you to Millers for sending these as part of your intro package. The metallic one is Kodak Professional Endura for Millers. So this is, this is a guess. Let's see if we can kind of compare the textures a bit. So this is the one that's also Kodak Professional Endura. Okay, no, you know what? I think I could be wrong, but I believe, so this is the Kodak Professional Endura one from Pro DPI. This is the unmarked one, but when I kind of do this, I think the way that it's reflecting light, I think the bottom one might be the actual metallic just based on that. The top one has a little bit more texture, very slight, this sheen here. It's hard to know. I'll go look at the website. Let's look at their photo papers. We've got Kodak Metallic Fuji Pearl. So I was wrong. This is Fuji Pearl. For myself, when I printed photos to keep or to give as gifts, I really like matte. I've kind of always done matte. I just think it's really pretty. These are supposed to totally match. Not totally, because I did it manually and I kind of stuck with the adjustments that I like better. They're closer than you might think. So as you can tell, very different color rendering. This is kind of the test print that they give you. This is the Fuji Film Luster and this is the matte. So you can see definitely slightly different color lower contrast. Again, I created this to be on this paper originally. Part of the reason I like this, I think, is because it's sort of softer and lower contrast. That's a style that you can go for or not. I'm not sure if it's the style I'm gonna go for this time, but for a lot of my prints, I really like that. But do keep in mind that it's gonna change the saturation and contrast especially a ton. Those are those. I really like these, I really like matte. The matte has taken way more of the pink out. I like the matte rendition of this so much more. This is pearl, this is luster, this is matte, this is metallic. I would say that for this print, I do, I think the metallic look is really cool, especially on large prints when you see that in a gallery or something. But I think for this print, I don't know, I don't know. I think the pearl is a little undersaturated for me, which again, could fix, could order another round. This is, I think, too cross-processed for me, although I love the sheen. The matte is beautiful. For this one, my winner is the matte. Here again, I slightly changed the colors. I took out some of the pinks, and I think I like it better. I don't think this is going to be my favorite version. So this is the initial luster color that you get in the sample. This is the metallic, which I like again, pearl. I'll keep comparing them to the luster. You can see how the light goes. Hi! Hey. <laughs> taking so long to film. We're back at it. We're gonna kind of whip through this. So the next one we've got the metallic, the pearl. Both very shiny. The metallic one is a little higher contrast, a little more saturated. It's a little glossier than the pearl one. We also then have the luster. This is sort of our original go-to test print one. I like this a lot. We also have the matte. Luster, matte. I think these are both really beautiful. The matte is a little bit brighter overall, including in the shadows. The shadows are sort of a crushed blacks look, that film look that people are trying to recreate with Visco and what have you, a little bit. Lower contrast, lower pinks again, which is, I think, 
partly why I keep liking this more. I keep being drawn to the matte papers. That's kind of always what I've used for printing my own work. I think I said that before. I really like it. You can also see a color shift actually on this with those pinks again in the water. If you look, let me get a little closer. So here the water's got sort of pink in those highlights and there's a little bit of that left in the matte, but not much. It's just sort of a much more teal colored water. This is sort of a purplier blue. I like the matte color rendition better, even though I do really like that kind of pop of contrast in the luster and in the metallic. Let's do the coastline photos. Metallic, I think this kind of photos where the metallic really stands out, so I love that. Here's the pearl, similar. Again, I like the metallic better. I think the pearl is my loser so far across the board. The luster, kind of classic, kind of beautiful. I think on a print level, this one is sort of, just because it's the classic, it's sort of unremarkable to me. Like, it's great, it does the job well, the colors look good, it just lets the photo be what it is. Here's the matte, here's the luster. Again, the matte still has some saturation to it but less less saturation less contrast less black blacks the whites are still pretty bright it's kind of a lighter image overall and then of course you've got the the sheen difference i like the matte on this i like the luster on this no you know i think i like the luster better than the metallic still actually i think the metallic would be really beautiful i think it would depend on the lighting in your house is what i think because as soon as i start turning it i'm like never mind i like the metallic better metallic then luster then matte and then pearl you know nothing against pearl i think it looks beautiful on some people's work just not my fave we've got metallic metallic of this house with the magnolias photo. I love this photo. This is one of my favorite photos I've taken during quarantine, I think. And I think the metallic, again, really beautiful for this kind of a thing. Less so than with the landscape. I think it's a little distracting maybe for the house. The pearl here, again, not my vibe. Here specifically, it looks like the pearl is just like a, a colder image overall. This is the metallic. This is the pearl. And we've got that luster, which I love the luster. So far my fave. And then the matte, which I also love in a very different way. I think again here I prefer the luster to the matte. One thing I would love to do is put the matte behind glass and see how that changes it because I think the reflectiveness is an element and most people would probably have this in a frame so that would be good to see. But I think in this case we go luster, then matte, then metallic, then pearl. Kind of regretting not getting a 4x5 <laughs> of the luster of this photo. But here's the luster. Metallic. I like it. It's it's too much of an effect I think on this photo. This photo doesn't need this much flash. Here's the pearl. Same thing. Don't really love either of these. I was about to say I might choose the pearl over the metallic for this photo, but no, it's too cold again and not. Would still do the metallic over the pearl, but don't love either of them. I like less around this a lot. And then the matte. These are, I think, my two favorites for this photo. I think I maybe I would tie these for first place. These are both just bad, I think, for this photo. So in this photo of Asia, I liked the matte best. I liked the matte best of the Eiffel Tower, the matte and the luster for this one, and then the luster for, oh no, this was the metallic the luster for this print. So I'm across the board, which is not what I was going for. Please leave me a comment down below. Let me know which your favorite paper is. If you think it's different for each photo, I would love to know like what you think about each photo. It's hard to decide. I'm leaning towards having just one paper for all of the photos across the board. I think that's just simpler. I think it's more consistent. Judging off of this, it's either going to be the matte or the luster. Let's do a final test. I have a picture frame, so I'm going to just put one of the mats behind the frame, see how that changes the look, if at all, and then we'll wrap this baby up. This artwork is by Robin Nicole Studio. I will link her Etsy page down below. She's a photographer and started doing graphic design stuff, artwork, illustrations during quarantine, and I think it's really beautiful. So I'll link that below if you want this, but for a second we're going to take it out of the frame. It's not the right size for these photos, but I'm going to keep the mat so we can kind of fake frame them for a second. Let's take this one. So the luster here was my favorite. The matte was my second favorite. Let's put them both in the glass. I'll do just the matte first and then we'll do both. If you're a person who likes things to be straight, I'm very sorry because this is going to bother you. Just to kind of just show you how it reflects the light differently behind the glass versus the luster. So we've got kind of this without glass, this with glass. It doesn't make as big of a difference as I thought it would. I mean, obviously it looks glossier behind glass, but the fundamental colors and contrast and stuff. Not that different. Let's stick this back there too. This one's luster and this one is matte. I think I still like the luster better on this. Please let me know down below which paper you think I should go for for my shop. We've gone over a lot in this video that took me three days to film. We went over four print shops. I would say in my personal looking at them, if I had just ordered prints from any one of these and not compared, I think I would have loved any of them. Having compared them, I think White House Custom Color is my clear loser just for that 
sort of sharpness in their prints. That's pretty make or break for me. The other three I think all have really excellent quality of printing and that's just going to come down to what kinds of colors you like in your photos and also how your monitor is calibrated. My monitor is calibrated to a D65 white point if that means anything to you. If not, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it some other time. But that's good context to have in case you're also someone who calibrates their monitor and is looking at prints. Because of course the way that colors look on my computer is related to how they're going to look on the print. I think Miller's is my favorite off the bat. I said before that I already stick with them for client work. I trust them a lot. I trust them enough to know that if a client of mine wants to order prints from them, it's going to be reliably high quality, beautiful colors. They do a great job and they have amazing customer service. The other thing about Miller's is that when it's not directly my client ordering through a gallery, Miller's is actually the most expensive option for me to order those prints to be made to them sell. And because with a print shop, unlike providing a gallery to my clients that they can order from and it's sort of direct and I can trust that Miller's is gonna do an amazing job, I'm going to decide on my prints in advance. I'm gonna get test prints made so I can see what they look like and I can make tweaks and reorder and with that whole process, given that the quality is very similar, I think I'm going to go with Pro DPI for now. Yeah, that's my opinion. I'm hesitating as of filming between the matte paper for all of my prints and the luster paper for all of my prints. Would love your opinions on that, especially if you think you might want to buy a print. Let me know what print you'd like to buy and what paper you like best that'll help me come to a decision. That's, I think, pretty much all I have for you now. I will let you know when the shop goes live. I'm working on the descriptions and you know the whole shop part of my website right now when it does go live i will be donating the proceeds from the shop for a while probably like a month ish to black lives matter related organizations again i will let you know the details of that when they're totally finalized and up online yeah i hope this was helpful give me a thumbs up if it was leave me a comment if you have any questions or opinions on this i would love to hear go ahead and hit subscribe hit the bell all those things as you wish and i will see you soon thanks bye this. Hi. Oh, the perils of filming outside. Oh my god. Wow. Wind. Fire, she blows. What am I, a pirate? Where's my brain?